So our final, so our final, our final speaker of the session is Dr. Victor McDougall. Uh, and he's gonna differ from our other veterinarians who spoke today in that he doesn't work at a Falcon Clinic, he works with you by Falcon Center, which is involved in Falcon Racing, which I'm sure he can talk more about. The other uh, fact I'll give you about Victor is that Victor is a falconer and also does falcon racing. You can talk to me about that. You can touch me? <laughs> you can only me? Good afternoon. I've had a uh, lot of sleepy faces here. So I'll try to not be boring, I'll try to wake you up a bit. So good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. As they just said, I am uh, Victor Mateusa. I'm the veterinarian for the Dubai Falcon Center, which uh, is a private breeding collection. They have some of the most uh, beautiful falcons in there, in case you ever want to visit. So we go on. <coughs> this is part of uh, my PhD. It's the uh, first time when I show officially um, about it. And I'll show a bit how was my journey with it. So how it all happened. This will work. this all started. Six years ago, in 2014, I was graduating and um, I had no intention to be a student again. I was so filled up with energy and freedom, I said, no more studying, I will not touch a book anymore. And uh, after six years of work, I have given myself a couple of months of freedom to do what I love the most, which is falconry. I went with uh, my mentor, Dr. Hibbler, in uh, Austria, we were training eagles, I was learning that as well. When I received a call from the dean of my university, he proposed me a PhD. Well, I was refusing politely, <laughs> but he insisted. He said, you are the only one that had an interest in birds of prey in our university, and we really want you to come and discuss that with us. I said, okay, be polite. I agreed, and I went over to the university, and we stayed, and we discussed. And we agreed on that, and I started. After that, I met Dr. Jamie. I came for an internship in Dubai, where I immediately started working afterwards. And I was still looking for a topic. I knew that I wanted to do falcons, but I was not really attached to the part that I worked. And Dr. Jamie said, choose career for us, it'll be fun. <laughs> and that's how the journey started. <coughs> what are those uh, careers for us, for everybody in here, um, the falconers? will address it as uh, coccidia. And they are protozoans, as Genus Cariospora was used to be, discovered by Lager in 1904. They consist in uh, one orchid with uh, four seeds inside and eight small um, sporozoa. It's a full taxonomy for all of you who want to go deep into the research. And why are these spora? When I started my studies, it was named Cariospora. Well, halfway, Professor Schuster from CPRL came with a very interesting paper. And according to the molecular studies, all the species that they were in Cariospora from birth, they were transferred to Sarcosistide family, given a new name, Avispora. And all the Cariospora species present in reptiles, they stay as Cariospora of a Meridius family. As um, we have falconers here and uh, presented that for all the history, as uh, falconry evolved over the years, Orlik, Cariospora, Abyspora, however you want to call it, was always there as well. And found the expansion of falconry. How we find it? It's very easy. You just take a small little piece of sample anywhere you see it on the field, on the training ground. During the training, the Freeman Falcon go there, check some pickle. It's very, very easy to find. It's very well known and most of the farmers and researchers with the time they were aware of it, how they get infected normally by ingesting the water or, or uh, food contaminated with the sporocytosis. We know that the clinical signs can be very unspecific. Like uh, Christian had said, if they are hunting falcons, they will still hunt. You might not see that huge difference, especially in a very large gene falcon. You'll see no uh, changes in smaller falcons, such as peregrines, especially males. They will drop quite quick, they will look fluffed up, and uh, you'll definitely see uh, low, low performance. For 
from our father because as a Christian said again, we are doctors for uh, athletes. So it's very important every small thing. And when you train a super performance falcon, every day you check the time, so you see exactly how your falcon performs. Well, when they have coccidia, you can definitely see that they will uh, definitely drop, let's say, one second, and they will come to you and say, they already know, the falcon, they will come to you and they'll say, Doctor, this one has coccidia. Okay, let me check it, we'll find it. So many times, it's that case. It's very difficult to control it. As um, all the doctors mentioned today, in this part of the world, it's um, hard to implement all the protocols and everything will be distributed everywhere. All right, so we go first to what we did in all these five years, I was on the journey. First, we wanted to determine the prevalence and uh, the paper that in the end was accepted in the Journal of um, <laughs> Medicine after many, many trials. So what we did, we wanted to see exactly what is the prevalence and what kind of species are, are found here in the UAE. We have collected from um, seven dedicated Falco hospitals, including one as well that uh, helped me a lot. Um, and from all of those samples, about 7.5% were positive. And the Falcons we collected from were peregrines, gear Falcons mostly, a lot of gear peregrines, um, and some other small Falcons uh, collected from the, from the market. This is how the we collected them in cubes, and uh, as you can see, different appearances of fecal samples um, infected with coccidia. These were the species that we identified in the Middle East, there were six of them, were Sherogi Falconis, Kusari Mega Falconis, and Neo Falconis. They are all the descriptive morphology characteristics, again, for whoever is interested, I can send it to you. As uh, a prevalence, we found that Kusari was uh, the species with the highest prevalence among the species. We are considering that the very effectivity of it and the um, majority of the cases. Neo Falconis, again, has a high rate, and, and the Mega Falconis, the other species, less. As far as the species infected, most of them were the gene peregrines. Um, I heard before that the thing that they have less uh, immunity. I, I think they were much more in number, uh, the gene peregrines, than the gills in general. We had as well uh, polyparasitism of um, Abyssopora species. So we found Kusari and Neopalconis together, and sometimes in a couple of cases we found together with Falconis as well. We found as well concurrent uh, parasitoses uh, such as uh, Porosicum, uh, Capillaria, and Peratosticulum. Um, Normally, in the hunting falcons that came back from uh, Pakistan. <coughs> well, so we wanted to know how exactly they always and again and again they get uh, reinfected, even if they get the medicine, even if uh, everything is um, is covered. So we we wanted first to understand if. Is there any intermediate host uh, between the two that we are feeding in, uh, in our breeding facility, for example? And we were inoculating with sporulated hosts, uh, pigeon, mice, quail, rats, and we kept them under control. We checked the fecal every single day. We do not, did not identify any stage. So we collected as well the segments of the digestive system after 14 days post infection. We did um, histopathological preparates, we did not identify as well any stage. So we concluded that they might um, play a role as parathenic, as transporter, but not really as intermediate host. We went and on trying to find the most common way how the host they get distributed. So what we did, we collected from the falcons to a couple of globes used for uh, general feeding of the falcons. And, um, we did the scraping from all of them. We were um, the same between me. And what we found that two of them, they indeed they had osis on them in different degree of uh, viability. Then what was the most important on how it gets distributed the water? Because they need moist. Uh, we all know that um, in general, coccidia, they, they need very, very moist environment. And if it's water, they will sporulate very, very quick. So what we did, we were observing two gene falcons, a uh, peregrine and a kestrel, 
all of them they were confirmed as carrying um, Abispora. We had two liters of water in each of their plates. And they were left in place for 72 hours. At 48 hours, we collected one liter from that, and on 72, the rest of the quantity. So what we found is that, okay, the authenticity then and finding that is uh, illegal. Um, in 48 hours, we found about 550 OCs per gram in that liter, and uh, that was doubled after 72 hours. The formulation process was about 49% after 48 hours and 83% oh, after 72 hours. So we concluded that water plays one of the most important roles in distributing the, the infection. Even if the falcons were medicated already, the fact that they were already keeping uh, on their chests, on their feet, uh, fecal matter with oocysts inside, the first time when they would go to the water plate, they were contaminated, the cycle will be again uh, loaded. Of course, every time you transport them to, to the hunting place, to the training place, they will get in touch with each other, they will get it again. Again, what we did together with uh, Justin, we wanted to find out where do they live inside the digestive system for the falcons, where they love. So what we did, we had a falcon carcass that um, was previously diagnosed as having the Bacopora, a massive uh, infection. And uh, we were collecting the whole uh, digestive tract, we separated it in three different parts, and we did the um, uh, preparation, the pathological preparation from each one of them. So we examined as well macroscopically in the first uh, third uh, we did some particular hemorrhages and some lives microscopically. On the second third uh, we see less um, um, micro hemorrhages and image of macrogamons. On the last part uh, we did not see any more uh, hemorrhages but we seen a lot of uh, viscous mucus as well in the last part of the infection. All right, because we are vets, we have to go straight to the, to the treatment and um, uh, we wanted to evaluate what will be the, the best uh, medicine, the best protocol that we can actually give. So it's a lot of uh, products here in the literature, but here in the Middle East, most of them are used, uh, the Bicox, uh, the Tadwil, and uh, the Cladwil in different forms. And normally, you don't even need to catch the falcon if uh, they are training falcons, you can just uh, uh, straight away with the tube. So what we did, uh, we were medicating them in the season 2016 to 2017. 2016 we used Clodrazuril, and in 2017 we used Diclazuril. So we had, every time we had um, training falcons and breeding falcons, uh, different numbers. All right, the training falcons, they were always kept um, on the green carpet, grass carpet, uh, with uh, um, carton paper where they can change them every single day. This is how it looks like in the breeding chambers. They have a water plate, they have a feeding plate, and uh, these are the perches. So what, what we've seen, we try to evaluate after 14 days after medicating them. In the classroom, it went 89% uh, um, efficacy for the training falcons and 100% for the breeding falcons. With the class wheel, again, we had 100% with the breeding falcons and uh, higher rate uh, for the class wheel. So we conclude that the class wheel worked a slight better and there is that the whole result. Uh, which months we um, have given the medication, how many were positive, how many were negative, which ones we repeated and so on. So what we conclude is that Ciclas will definitely be much more um, uh, beneficial for the falcon for more reasons. It doesn't really give side effects. We don't trust really it was the um, usual thing to see that the falcon, they have a even higher drop in their performance in the next couple of days. I'm sure with your, in your falcon, in your cases, but nobody will have seen that um, we identify as having the Abispora, we medicate them with Otrasuril, the next day they are even worse than they were before. They recover, they get better afterwards. With the class we did not see that, they were very happy with it. 
why we, it's really easy to spread it all around the world as the as we said, the history of Falcon is uh, thousands and thousands of years. And uh, Falcons, they are going from all around. And I think UAE is a place where <laughs> everything happens. All the centers around the world, they said, all the Falcons in here. So in August and September will be an explosion of everything from everywhere. So all our uh, efforts to keep it under control, uh, they, they are not effective, so we have to to always control medication. Uh, there have been as well uh, vaccine trials, which again, they can give a temporary uh, immunity, but it doesn't last. So for now, we, we apply only the medication. And I would like to thank a lot of, a lot of people. Uh, if I put a list, it would be hundreds probably. <laughs> all the hospitals, all the clinics. These are the main people, my uh, supervisor from Romania, Zoltan, our breeder from Dubai Falcon Center. <coughs> we are uh, spending a lot of time together. Uh, Dr. Jamie Tambur, of course, and his wife. Uh, they were giving me a huge, huge support. Sheikh Sultan, as well. I was there, I was using all the facilities. And of course, my boss was uh, always winning in the races. If you go to the races, you will always see him there getting the podium. And because we are on the Falcon races, we, I, I will just give a short video of my Falcon this season. I'm not sure if it will work. Ah, it works. Okay. Ah, okay. So I, I will let you watch it and you can So, so they're being infected with the proxy from the pigeons they, they take to them, or no, no. They, so the pigeons they, they don't have the same species as, as the falcon. They definitely get it to, from the other falcon that they were, have been already been infected. So it's just literally passing yes. itself around. Yes. Right. We monitor them very closely, so we try to 
when they are coming in the country, they do well to educate them, even that would be individual in that class. Because what's happening is many times the breeders uh, already medicate them before they send them, but they could give uh, a low dose or only single time, not when we give birth to, to, to them. To them. And uh, we wanted to make sure that they still have something inside the nuclear straight away. Eventually we repeat it after two weeks. And then after one month, we are checking again. <coughs> if we have positives, we will give again for everybody. And then the next month, if we don't find, we will give only for the positives. So I think it's like a proper control. And with the breathing particles, uh, no, no way we check to send this. If we don't find, we don't give them. Um, if we find, we need this for all of them to make sure. So you check the pattern, you found the positive, you gave the medicine. Then, when did you check again? No, we have to 14 days. After 14 days. Yeah. And then? If they are negative, we, we don't give them. So you might have missed in between mm -hmm. that they actually have coccidia because if you yes. give it, and um, the, the amount of coccidia will go down, but then yes. it might be still there. Yes. So I, I think it's very difficult to say that whole pastoral or Hepastoral is working better with this sort of method. You would need to check yeah. it every day. Yeah, that, that's true as well. We, we, we prefer the first class real for the side effect side. And it was much easier to do they just took an hour, it's not too much easier. It's definitely easier. And did you find any resistancy in any of these? No, we, no we, found, we found birds that um, they're already weak. Even with the plasma, like sometimes they still get infected. In 14 days, you'll find it again. Um, but normally, in some birds, you but don't find it. But this is the question. Did they get it again, or they are still? It's, they it's very hard to say. They never got rid of it. This is very hard to say, and uh, I think we need to, to study this. Because actually, we need to check really every single day with people mm -hmm. to say if they are. Yeah. That, that's true. Like we have cases we check in the morning, in the afternoon, it's nothing. And they didn't even check it, they just have it. So this is again very difficult. It's difficult to say if one drug is more uh, effective yeah. or not. Yeah, that's, that's true. Right. Thanks for coming. I'm Victor. Uh, uh, we had also maybe this interesting observation last year uh, in the hunting season of almost 98% of the birds that were participating in the country after catching uh, Mara. Uh, And mostly because of the observation of Poston, and that uh, it doesn't cause lower, let's say, performance. And I checked this year, I had an interest, uh, and I, I was checking the Poston for five days so, so every day uh, after giving uh, seven, seven milligrams per kilogram back pressure uh, for two days. Uh, and then along the five days, it, 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 it did not recover again. Unfortunately, I didn't have the chance to retest it after 15 or 14 days, but uh, I believe that the cluster is after, let's say, one or maybe two days, uh, it really clears, let's say, for the short <coughs> period of time that I checked five days uh, the Because I had a couple of questions last year, that I really checked every single day. And I saw that some of the drugs not work at all. Mm -hmm. And they are, if they are only bringing back the falcons after two weeks, you might think they have been reinfected, but actually they never have been mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And also the other question was if it was by Kosovo for all these years, maybe there was some reason to change the results. But mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it would be very helpful to understand the picture. There is any kind of any form of of uh, resistance to this specific piece of procedure or specific, let's say, some procedure are more pathogenic than other ones. But <coughs> it's a good thing to know. Did you see any evidence that co-infection is linked to hunting procedure? No. In the instant 
at the first part of the Indestine. Which part exactly in the histology, which part of the Indestine did you find that? Because you just say the yeah. first part, what, what does it mean? The duodenum. The duodenum only. Yeah. 